Count me in, sugar daddy. Ready? Uh, yeah. Three, two, one. Whoa! Are you ready? Esteemed guests, one and all, leakers of the north, south, east, and west, and also a little somewhere in the middle, welcome back. Welcome, welcome back to Brain Leak. More powerful and sounding good than ever. I'm, I'm proud no and I leak. <laughs> yeah, tell us. Let us know if you leak and you're proud. Because they're not mutually exclusive. Yeah, you could be leak. You could leak and be shamed. <laughs> welcome back, everyone. For those of you <laughs> listening and not watching the video version i am back from my long trip in maine wow what'd you do what'd you eat well i ate a lot of seafood i uh drank too much alcohol um because that's always what happens when i'm back home i mean you're still alive so you didn't drink too much no i didn't drink if you drank too, too much you'd be dead this is true um yeah, so I, I'm like, I'm not gonna drink for a while. I've had my fill back home in Maine, and now I'm back here, and I'm like, I'm not going to drink alcohol. Until someone texts you, like, you wanna come out tonight? Like, dude. <laughs> yeah, Kyler, maybe. Kyler's got a rage again tonight, <laughs> dude. Bring the ball, dude. Kyler and Ryler throwing a keg stand party, dude. Dude, Chatsky's on the roof again. You know he's gonna fool Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> He just did a keg stand. He's about to fall, Nelson. Chad. Oh, fuck. Chad's off the chain, dude. If we had a frat, Brain Leak, yeah. what would it be called? Because you know how it's always like Delta Phi or whatever. Yeah. Ours would just be Beta, Beta, Beta. <laughs> <laughs> beta, Beta, Beta. It's just pure Beta energy. <laughs> beta Sigma, Beta. <laughs> and we we go that. around saying Semper Fi because we don't realize that that's like the Marines. Is I that the Marines? I, I don't know. <laughs> You're don't know. American. You guys put all your money in the military. Tell me. We do. We we really do. You know what's fucked up? As crazy as you guys are about that uh, stuff, uh, you are crazy. About the military or about e Greek life? Okay, we'll come back to that because I don't know what you mean. Oh, um, Greek, oh, Greek life is like the, the fraternities. Got it. Yeah. Um, no, with the army shit and mm -hmm. all of your stuff surrounding that. But when mm -hmm. you go to the cinema here in the UK, there's ads for it. It's like, oh, I'm just a woman. And then it just shows her like doing all this like shit in the military. And it's like, yeah, I'm just a woman. And then it's like, as if to be <laughs> like, women can also kick ass. In the military! I think we definitely have ads for the Marines and the Army and stuff, but it's not as uh, as prominent as you would think, I guess, yeah. But there are all Do you guys have, like, laws against it? Where you're not allowed to, like, petition people to join? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure we don't. Did, did you have that thing in school? Kind of like career day or something where you would go to the gym and there, or not career day. Well, yeah, career day. It was like a job fair where you go to the gym and there's a bunch of people from different jobs. You didn't have that? I grew up in a fucking haystack in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have anything like that. We had that where we, we all went to the gym and it was like, oh, it's career day. It, uh, people are going to come in and tell you about their jobs. So it was just like a bunch of booths in the gym and different mm. people of different jobs. And there was always a bunch of military people there being like, you don't need a job. Uh, get a rabbit gun. <laughs> hey, 12 year old, you want to get killed real quick? <laughs> it was so weird because that's what it was. Like, I was 13 years old and the military is oh. already trying to recruit me. Hey, you're, you're more than halfway to being able to get there. I don't even know how to spell military then. Or now. You can't now. <laughs> <laughs> don't pretend you've learned since. I have no idea. Now, every time those ads come on at the cinema, I'm like, this is fucked up. It's like some young dude going into a chip shop. Or he's like working at a butcher's or something is a new one. Mm. And then it's like... Oh, this, I'm getting yelled at at my job and I'm bad at it, so I'm gonna join the military. And then he comes back after so many years and they're like, you really went places, didn't you? And they're like all <laughs> proud of him coming home. It's like, 
I don't think I want to celebrate this. Do does the military overseas have benefits like it does in the U.S.? Because like in the U.S., they'll one pay you, but also you don't have to pay for school. And there's probably other probably. Shit. I imagine all the incentives you can think of, like good dental care and health care, and they pay for your school and they educate you while you're there and shit like that. I, I, it just sounds like I'm trying to like petition for the military right <laughs> yeah. now. It's like Terry Crews trying to petition people to work for Amazon. You can drive a forklift. <laughs> oh, I want to drive a forklift. Have you seen those military TikToks where it's like, it's like an attractive woman, like dressed up in uh whatever they're called what are they called the military uniforms what are they lingerie <laughs> what's these, what's um called oh your remember. your digs your scrubs your yeah it's like your scrubs. fatigues your fatigues. fatigues yeah it's like a bunch of like there's been a, a little trend where it's like the army posting like tiktoks with just like hot girls it's super weird <laughs> she's like, like what is this <laughs> hey big boy you want to join the military <laughs> it's so odd and she like pulls her hair out and it falls down wow wow <laughs> it's just so weird with with good dental care and health care and added benefits uh, it's like when you stay up too late watching tv i don't know if you guys had that but we'd have uh, like satellite channels like cable uh -huh. i guess but you would stay up way too late watching like Toonami or something, watching Dragon Ball, and then you would start scrolling through the channels and suddenly it's just like Babe Station. And it's oh. like, hey, do you want to talk to singles live now? And like I, the shittiest music of all time. I don't And think, I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> I don't remember having that, but I just remember everything for some reason. And maybe it was just because I was tired, it felt more loud. But I remember like <laughs> falling asleep and waking up and hearing ads play, and they were always like oh, three hundred percent louder than the show that you were watching. That's not because you're tired. That's because ad mixing and like <laughs> mixing for everything else is fucking awful. And you're just so sitting loud. there, and it's you're just like, oh, the ending of Dragon Ball is playing. And then it's like Ford F one fifty. Get out there and take your life. Go out and take your life by the balls. That's that's not what I meant to say. I didn't mean to go go and take your life. I meant take your life by by the antlers, by the horns, and like do do what you want. I didn't mean go out there and take your own life. That's not what Ford is about. I'm not trying to put words in Ford's mouth. <laughs> If you don't drive a Ford F-150, kill yourself! <laughs> to be fair, that's how people who drive those act and make you feel. Oh. You don't drive one of these? Ah, oh, step out in front of it. <laughs> you know, I feel like it's slowly becoming a thing where like, where like bro culture and podcast culture are starting to meld. There's all those like bro-y podcasts. Oh, How... that Venn diagram. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> How soon are we gonna get truck nuts for microphones? Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I wanna know where in this Venn diagram we are. Are we like the fucking singularity? We're like circling that. We've passed the event horizon and we can't get out anymore. <laughs> The We're just stuck. Pole of the yeah. Sim 7 b Getting closer and closer. That's what it is. The singularity at the middle of a black hole is a sure SM7B. Yeah. I, it's an un... Because that's how close you have to be to it, to speak into it. That's an untapped market, though. Truck nuts for microphones. Make it happen. Yeah. You mean like, like danglers? Like, like dash <laughs> dice? <laughs> like rear view mirror dice that like hang from your car. Have you seen truck nuts? No, where, where are microphone deodorizers? Ooh, that would be good because my pop filter doesn't smell good. No, years of saliva caked onto this bad boy. Oh man, I am What are truck nuts? Are they like up. meshuggah nuts that you eat in a truck? Just, you could just Google truck nuts. Truck nuts. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. Oh, <laughs> it's pretty popular in America. It's just metal testicles that you put on 
the like hitch of your truck. What <laughs> the so fuck funny. is this picture? What <laughs> the fuck is this? <laughs> That is just a zoomed in picture of someone's <laughs> ass on a bicycle with little glowing testicles hanging out of it. And that's what we need for the microphones. Oh. Mic sack. Yes. yes. Oh, we should totally make merch that is that. Little balls for your microphone. We could. We absolutely could. This is an untapped market. This is the future of podcasting and entertainment as a whole. It's pretty sexist, though, when you think about it. Like, where's the where's the clit dangler? <laughs> clit. Yeah, like a fucking angler fish, like just hanging down. Okay, that's how they get you. So there's truck nuts that you hang from your shock mount. But there's a whole <laughs> sleeve that you put over the Shure SM7B, <laughs> and the top is just a vagina. <laughs> it's just, you put a fleshlight over your SM7B. <laughs> I think, hey, I'm just thinking about the people out there that don't have testicles. Mm -hmm. You know, this what if you don't like true. testicles? What if you don't? Sometimes I don't want them on my body. Mm -hmm. It's very true. I want to take them off and put them on my microphone. But I can't do that. Nope. We just need a big old pair of knockers. We should yeah. get mic titties. Oh man, there's some. There's Everybody some, has titties. There's an alliteration there that we could do. Uh, mm, Mike Milkers. There we go. Oh. There we go. Mike Mahongas. <laughs> We've figured it out. We've microphone marsupials. Are you, you're just speaking into a pocket. Yeah, you, you you knocked it out of the park with the first one, and I'm just trying to participate. And uh, you're like doing the home run, and I'm just like following after you, <laughs> relishing in the cheering good. that's happening. And I'm like, yeah, I did this. You're doing this is me. so good. Don't worry about it. You're doing Mike great. Mike Milkers. He's and I've noticed that you get facial hair sometimes, and then other times it's gone. How do you do that? Mine stays on my face. Yeah, you know, I've uh, I've started taking care of my uh, my facial hair in the only way that you really should, which is with Harry's. Sh shave it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Sean, no matter why you shave or where you shave or even when you shave, Harry's has got you covered for the best shave of your life. Best and at a good price, too. Life. Whoa. That's right. Razors can really cost you an arm and a leg, and they don't even stack up to Harry's performance, all right? Ooh. You're going to feel like a king shaving with Harry's, okay? Quality premium your... product at a good price? Uh-huh. They give you a premium shave without the premium price tag, baby. Whoa. Uh -huh. It says here from the script that I can read that the starter set is a $13 value for just $3? That's right. Just $3 at harrys.com slash like B-R-A-I-N. That's right. harrys.com slash brain. That's correct. It includes a five-blade German, five German engineered razor. It's got Ooh. a weighted handle. Oh. Foam shaving gel. Travel cover. Ooh, huh? yeah, because you don't want to just shave raw. That would hurt your face. If you use the foaming shave gel, it goes... Shh. Exactly. And Sean, are you forgetful? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about a thing because you can schedule delivery refills for as low as $2. Deliver refills? Yes. Whoa, you just merged two words together. That's cool. And it's kind of like how Harry's merge is quality and affordability together. Whoa, fist bump. I hear. I also see here that they also do creams, washes, and lotions. Because sometimes when you shave, it get itchy, it gets sensitive. So people got a mm. sensitive skin. You don't want mm. that. The blades mm -hmm. are made in their own factory in Germany. They stay sharp. And the guys who tried it say their eighth shave is as sharp as their first. I don't know That's about you, right. but I've used razors before where my eighth shave wasn't as sharp as my first. It felt like I was peeling my fucking face like a potato. Yeah, 
It's true. I use them all the time, and uh, oftentimes I don't need to swap out the blades as, as often as I used to. I can still use that thing, still sharp as ever, clean, smooth. Face shape. as smooth as the day you were born. That's right. Like that, smooth. baby. That's what I sounded like when I plopped onto the counter at the doctor's. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so. Harrys.com. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, harrys.com slash brain. We're just leaking at the same time right now. $13 starter set for just $3 at harrys.com slash brain. That's harrys.com slash brain. This has nothing to do with Mike Milkers, but I was thinking of things to talk about on on the, the pod today. Um, and I, Wait, I don't why do you think... say it like that? Are you Are you ashamed of the podcast? No, I'm just saying. Why do you have thinking, to say I, on the uh, on the pod? I don't, I don't know. I just said it like that. I didn't such mean anything about. I just said such the pod. a quirky little guy. <laughs> I know, but I was thinking about things, and I was like, I was thinking about because I had one last night. Reoccurring dreams. Do you ever have reoccurring dreams? Yeah. Have we talked about this before? We've talked about our dreams before. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Spencer. <laughs> I, I scared Spencer. And we told people to tell us what our dreams meant, and they probably oh, did, right. and we didn't pay attention to it. No, we didn't. We also asked people, I think, I can't remember if this episode has already gone up or if it's going up tomorrow, but the star sign one, because we have to read people's analyses. I think that goes up after this one. I think of so. Of recording. Yes. We haven't, like, oh, we could do that. We could record an episode of the podcast that is, like, in the future and like oh suddenly episode 450 went up it's like whoa you guys weren't ready to see that yet and we're just dressed in like <laughs> neon tech wear <clears throat> like a 90s dance music video and we're just talking about shit that's like dude meet more meet me boo <laughs> and they're like what is happening? It's like, you guys are not ready for that episode yet. You'll understand when we get there. We should do that for April Fools. That would be <clears> yeah. Really fun. That's a good idea. Mark that one down here. Oh, mark that one down. Mark in that one head. down. In your noggin. Go for it. Go for yeah. it, baby. <clears throat> There's so much ripe potential for narrative in these podcasts. And everyone's just like, hey, look at the testicles on that moose. Like, I saw a moose. IRLZs? Yeah. Went to the main wildlife park. Oh, that's Wait. not the same. That's like, oh, I saw a tiger. <laughs> it's like, it was in a zoo, but. Yeah, but it's still exciting. It I mean, still... yeah, but it's not like, oh, we were driving down the road, snowy, middle of the night, our headlights caught eyes with a fucking moose. Yeah, that that's, would be that's real horrifying. Shit. I think we talked about it because we were talking about how the antlers are furry. Yeah. I remember now. Um, Did you go to Super Fun Splash Town? Fun Town Splash Town USA, where American families go to play. I was not that far off with my joke name. <laughs> I know, you were pretty close. Uh, I did. It was great. There were so many children there, obviously, because it's an amusement park. But it was really funny, just like listening to all of the kids' conversations. We went on this one ride. It's called Dragon's Descent. Why are you eavesdropping on children? Because it's funny. So we were in line for Dragon's Descent, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> so Dragon's Descent is one of those, like, big tower rides where it brings you to the top and then it drops you. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> right before, um, <laughs> we were just listening to this little kid and his friend. They were probably, like, I don't know, maybe like seven or eight. And mm -hmm. he's like, literally, if it goes too fast, I'm going to scream. I'm going to scream. And there's <laughs> nothing you can do about it. And I'm going to do it. And then at the end of his sentence, he just farted. <laughs> 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 it was so funny. And then he went on the ride and he gets off and we're still in line because they were in front of us. And he was like, dude, I was literally, I was so close to screaming. I was so close, but I didn't do it. But I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> You'd hear him scream too because he'd be like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he had the like discord kid voice. It was oh, very, very cute. Not to sidetrack from this too hard, but Evelyn and I went walking the other day around the park and there's always people jogging and some guy passed us the other day that was 
he wasn't the most confident jogger. Uh-huh. Knees together, legs splayed, mm-hmm. uh, like shoulders up. Like you could tell, took a lot for him to get out there. Good for him. But as he walked by us, he just crop dusted us <laughs> as he went by. He just went like, wait, wait, wait. It was like three little toots came out of him. And I'm like, are you running like that because you're trying to clench cheeks? Maybe he was about to shit himself. He probably could have been. He probably was super close. Yeah, but it was fucking epic. Really (laughs) spiced up our walk. (laughs) Wait, I want to talk about something. Because you talked about going to Fun Town, Splash Town, Mega Super Time. Uh And you were like, yeah, I can't wait. So excited. Finished the episode. You were like, I'll send you a picture when I'm there. There was no picture. Did I not send you a picture? There was no picture. I don't know if I took any photos at Funtown Splashtown USA. Well, you told me you take a picture, then you never did. And I never did. I thought thought we were friends. Hold on. Let let me see if I have a picture from Funtown Splashtown USA. Friends, co-hosts, lovers. I know. I don't have any photos from Funtown Splash Town US. How do I not? I don't have a single one. I might actually. I then might. I don't believe you went. I might have photos of Funtown Splash Town USA because I took. I barely took any photos on my phone. I took my little film camera and I took over 300 photos on that bad boy. I shot almost 10 rolls of film. Jesus, were you just taking pictures of the kids that were walking around? (laughs) No, taking pictures of everything, everywhere, all at once. (laughs) Fucking every drop of water in the park. Yeah. I took nine rolls of film and 36 photos on each roll. Wow. And not once did you think, hey, I should take one for Sean because I told him I would. I know. I'm an asshole. I should have taken one on the top. Just promising shit and falling through. And I was sitting here. I was literally like on my phone all evening waiting. Watching. And nothing happened. So I went to sleep at 4 a.m. because I was just up waiting. Oh, I have one photo from Funtown Splashtown USA. It's just from their fucking website, isn't it? <laughs> it kind of looks like it's from their website, honestly. Uh, but it was a very fun time. We went on the big swingy ride, like the, and by that I mean like the big giant swing thing where there's a bunch wow. of swings. Look at you that blue talking? ass sky, that you green ass about? nature. Um, yeah, that was uh, in line for Excalibur, the wooden Excalibur. roller coaster that breaks your fucking spine every time. You Hell go. yeah, fucking it's tenderize great. the meat. Mm-hmm. Get uh, you ready. But it was very fun. Um, everything, because I haven't been there since I was a kid, everything was much smaller than I remember, yeah. which is kind of the way it goes, really. It's yeah. kind of the way it is. Uh, but it was maybe, maybe that's the thing. Maybe Cadbury cream eggs aren't getting smaller. Maybe we were just getting bigger. Oh, that's so true. I've never had a Cadbury cream egg. I don't I'm know sorry, if I can. What? I don't know if I can. Are they filled with chocolate? They're filled with fondant. I don't even know what fondant is. Fuck off! You don't know what fondant is. <laughs> I probably it's do like it. It's like icing. You know that texture of icing that's kind of oh. like stiff-ish? Uh-huh. It's kind of like a meltier version of icing. Okay. Okay. Uh, do cream eggs have peanuts? Does it? Because this sucks if you can't eat those. I know. They do not share lines with peanuts or tree nuts. Oh, I should try Dude, when you cream egg. I was going to say when you come over here, but I don't know if they're in season. In season? Is that what you said? Yeah, they're like an Easter thing. Oh. So the cream eggs are back, and then there's like a big marketing push to be like, Cadbury cream egg, how do you eat yours? They're not uh, They're not ripe yet. I Here's how I eat my cream egg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell I me. I bite the top off. Uh-huh. And it's like an egg, so you bite like the little snippet off the the the, the acute end, uh-huh. not the oblong end. You and then I like the bite egg. it off, and then I just put it in my mouth, and I get I let the tongue go to work. I'm like a fucking Aww. bear looking for honey, dude. <laughs> I'm just fucking in there. If there was a camera in there, like a mini GoPro, you'd see some shit. <laughs> We could do that. Get a little probe lens and put it, just make a little hole in the back and then don't let any of the cream out and then just put it in there. And then you would never get enough light into that cream egg. (laughs) Oh, but it's, it's sensational. What does it taste like? Heaven. 
Honestly, it kind of tastes... <laughs> the texture of it kind of reminds me of jizz. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's all it's like a white goopy liquid in it so it's like i mean if jizz tasted like that huh, nom nom protein for daddy yum 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 you wouldn't be able to stop me from coming on my own face <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah we should get you a cream egg yeah I'd you need to come over egg. we need to do mm -hmm. the british cereals which mm -hmm. addendum that video has gone up now. People are like, oh, they haven't tried Reese's. I'm like, they would fucking kill you. Yeah. First of all, we couldn't have done those. Oh, honey know. bunches of oats. There's a million and one cereals we could have done. There's too fucking many. There's too many. There's too many. And in that video, we had too many cereals. Yeah. Was, God, it was awful. But I came home and I tried Rice Krispies. <laughs> I tried Rice Krispies at home and they do taste better here. Okay. Okay. It wasn't, and people were like, you didn't change the milk. The milk went bad. It was in the sun. We didn't record for four days. Yeah. No, it was fine. Yeah. Didn't change the milk. That's just because we, just because you like your little fruity pebbles that taste like fucking shriveled up ass and they fucking shitty, whatever. <laughs> I'm upset. I'm hot. People, people were upset about that video. People loved it, but people Good. were upset. And you should be upset. upset. Because that's a reflection of yourself. You're upset with yourself. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, oh, he's gonna love my cereal, and then I didn't, and then they were like, oh, that's an attack against me personally. I love that cereal. Do you? Or did you just grow up with it? Yeah, this is true. Uh, nostalgia factor. That was a weird thing for me because I hadn't tried a lot of those cereals since I was a kid, and like one of them, I was like, oh, I love Raisin Bran, and I tried it, and it tasted like ass. Yeah. It wasn't good. So I want to do a follow-up video where you come here and you try our cereals, but also we need to get some of the same ones like Cheerios and stuff. And like, yeah. you don't have to love them, but maybe you'll be able to tell that they're very different and maybe very a different. bit better. Probably. And I, it would be fun to do candy as well. Yeah, uh, that, that was what I was going to follow up with. You need to do chocolate since yeah. Cadbury chocolate is such a big thing over here. Because chocolate here is very different because we're all about our milk chocolate here in America. Hmm. Yeah, I remember being disappointed when I had my first Hershey bear. Yeah. Because that's People like your, it, that's like the chocolate mm -hmm. in America. And I had it and I was like, yeah, it's fine. It's all about sugar over here, baby. We're all about our sugar and our high fructose corn syrup and our, you know, our GMOs. We love GMOs over here. Oh, hell yeah. I want a mutated chocolate bear. Mm -hmm. I want a chocolate bar that's grown in a lab that's five times the size of regular chocolate. Mm -hmm. I want nuclear chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I want irradiated nuclear chocolate that has four fingers. I want to try Japanese candy. Ooh, yeah. That'd be good. I bet Evelyn has some good uh, some good Japanese candy recommendations. Yeah, she was, she'd, she'd do right by us. I bet. I bet. I, Hold up, mm -hmm. no, it's just take a little plane over there. Take a little plane over there. Say konnichiwa. Uh -huh. Walk right in. I'm being like, where the candy at? Where's it at? Huh? Come on <laughs> now. I'll rent a car and I'll drive up the coast. And I'll get me chocolate along the way. I saw that uh, that Joey and Felix made a video of like trying a bunch of different sushi. Which I mm. I love sushi. And I do kind of feel like my stomach is a bottomless pit for sushi. But there is for sure a limit. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I don't know how much sushi they ate. But I bet at the end of that, they were <laughs> feeling some type of way. <laughs> this is why I don't like videos where you, like, eat to excess for uh -huh. entertainment. Because I'm like, I just feel like shit afterwards. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we ate everything on the McDonald's menu, and that sounds awesome. And then you do it, and it's like, man, you got a lot of shit on this menu. Yeah. There's too much fucking shit in me. <laughs> There's too much shit in me. I can't do it no more. I have a fucking tiny apple-sized stomach that can't eat no more. I can't eat no more, boss. I'm tired. I'm tired of this, no Grandpa. More. That's too damn bad. <laughs> Keep eating the McDonald's menu. Keep eating it. <laughs> we ate everything on the McDonald's menu, and you just have a menu that you're eating. 
It's like I ate the whole menu. I ate everything on that menu. <laughs> you would feel less shitty eating the actual menu versus eating the food on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that their burgers are made out of recycled cardboard. Probably. I Have you ever seen those videos on TikTok where it's like somebody like making the burgers and they take them? It's like a GoPro POV of them working at McDonald's. And they take yeah. the burgers out and they just sound like hockey pucks when they're putting them down. Mm -hmm. But they, and then they have the, they have the cool condiment squirters though. I like those. Oh yeah. I like those. I have a thing that puts like the, the, I don't know if it's salt and pepper or like, like, um, Certain God, what's spice. it called? MSG. Oh God. I love MSG. Remember when everyone thought MSG was bad for you and it turns out it was just racist people uh -huh. trying to pretend like the Chinese were awful for giving it to us? It's yep. like, no, it's fine and it tastes amazing on everything. Yeah, it, it boosts the umami. Baby. Oh, mm. dude. <laughs> I was umami. in umami last night. <laughs> <laughs> I was in umami last night. <laughs> it is fine for you, though. Just like everything, yeah. as long as you don't have like an extreme excess of it, then it's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's perfect. It's like growing fun. up, it was like you can't have too much salt. Salt will kill you. And now they're like, oh, salt is actually an electrolyte. You kind of need that to retain have, water and hydrate better. You have to have salt. You have yeah. to. You have Just to, don't, you maybe have don't to. put it in everything all the time. I think about that sometimes. About if I were to move to a different country how much healthier I would just be day to day because you waste in America, away. <laughs> like specifically in America, everything is so insanely processed. Mm. Like I would just be, I was thinking about that um, after I went to Korea because there I ate so much food, but I one felt better and I actually lost weight. And I was like, how did I lose weight? I was eating all the time. And it was like, Oh, yeah. it's because it, it's, just rice and vegetables and meat that doesn't have a ton of stuff on it. Like yeah. most of the meat in uh, in Korea is just the cooked meat and then you like dip it in a little bit of sauce or whatever. It's not just like fully covered other than it's like bulgogi epic. and stuff like that. It's so good. I love Korea. Yeah, they don't really do like minced beef in mm -hmm. Korea. I mean, I'm sure they do, but there's not a whole lot of it around it's always like actual cuts of meat. Yeah. Korean so food good, is the best food. It's so good. Korean it's... food followed by Mexican food. Oh, fuck me up and put me in a coffin. Oh, I'm done. It's so good. That's all I need. We tried every kind of food ever in the world. We brought one piece of food from every country and we made a tier list of which ones were good. The whole thing. Have you, has that video been released? The Mr. Beast video of every country in the yeah. world doing the thing? I didn't watch it. I, I, I kind of want to watch it to see who the Irish person is. What if it's you? <gasps> oh! Whoa. That's it wasn't great. <laughs> I, I was, was on the TikTok the other day. Oh. And I, I like how you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I learned, well, it was a song. It was a Sinead O'Connor song. <laughs> a, B, C, D. <laughs> it was the ABCs, T's, and I learned all of these different <laughs> characters. It was crazy. Now I can, now I can spell military. <laughs> Whoa. But it was a Sinead O'Connor song about the famine. Mm. And I don't know how historically accurate the song is, but she was singing about how there wasn't actually a famine. And I was like, was there, Was there? have I been lied to my whole life? I I don't know much about the fa famine. First of all, Sinead O'Connor, rest in peace. R.I.P. Mm -hmm. um, but I have no idea about the actual famine. I, I, what, anything got to do with Irish history. I'm so bad at it. and Because I didn't care when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. and then we're trying to shove it down my fucking throat. And I was like, fuck you, uh, patriarchy. And I, <laughs> you know, all my... <laughs> All my teachers were women. <laughs> um, now that I think about it, I had one male teacher. Weird. Um, I had a I had a solid mix throughout the years. I don't really know much about the famine. 
We went to a cool thing in New York. It's called Little Ireland. And um, it's just, it's literally like a piece of land from Ireland that was just put in the middle of the city. And you like, can go to it and walk around. Like imported? I don't know. <laughs> it looks it looks piece. very accurate, but I'm like, all you need is a stone wall and grass. <laughs> and it looks like Ireland. <laughs> and you just walk be... up through it and it's a bunch of quotes from like Irish history and the famine and things like that. God. If that is actual, like, they went and carved out a piece of land and imported it to the U.S., that's the most American thing of, like, <laughs> tourist stuff of, like, look, we imported this. That's something that, like, a rich celebrity would do to their house. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, our lawn is, uh, it was actually imported from, from Ireland. Um, yeah, you see, um, you see that jar over there? Yeah, my great-grandfather went to Ireland, uh, which... We're, we're from there, so he actually took a piece of land home with him and gave it to us as a gift for our housewarming gender reveal. <laughs> if they did that for for YouTubers, it'd be like, oh, yeah, you see that jar over there? That's actually um, from the Jar Squatter video. Um, <laughs> got that uh, at an that, auction. That uh, Belle Delphine bathwater in that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's... That's an original, yeah. It's it's grown since then, and it's like has like <laughs> microbiomes in it, and like little spaceships flying around. Just like yeah, so um, it's taken it's taken three years um since we since we broke land here, but uh, we finally got our our plumbing all done, and all of our tap water is um is Belle Delphine bath water. Um, we're it's actually super, recycled super through the system. She's upstairs, actually. <laughs> she just ferments in a tub. That's a Meat Canyon video. It's just Belle Delphine upstairs and you open up the door and it's it's dark. And it's just like, help me. And it's like, what was that? And you turn on the lights and Belle Delphine is like hooked up to IV in the bathtub, shriveled up into bones. Oh, she's being fermented for bath water. She just looks like a big raisin. Yeah. All pruny. That is a Meat Canyon video. Yeah. You got to fucking do it, Hunter. If you're not doing it, what's what the fucking you? point? I heard he's making an XQC video. I'm curious about that. Oh, baby. I wonder if we'll do XQC and Linus tech tips. There's been a lot. Oh, I mean, there's always, Linus. There's always drama, but there's been a, a particularly <sighs> pungent amount of drama recently. That doesn't yeah. make any sense, but... Any of those people that make videos got to do is like, did you see that this happened? I don't have an opinion on it, but this thing happened and it's going to get me views, so I'm going to talk about it. Those people are raking in the dough right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every I, day is like a new Linus, a, a new factoid has come out. So it's like, oh, dude, the fucking juicy teat of the drama nipple is just milk dry. It did make me uh, a little sad because... <sighs> Linus Tech Tips is one of those channels where it's like, I wouldn't say that I'm like a huge fan in that sense, but like I watch the channel's videos a fair amount. I'll like put it on the in the background and stuff, and it's just like, oh, you new GPU came out or whatever. Yeah, it's like symptomatic of whatever you're into. Like the Apple Vision headset will come out, and it's like, oh, I'll watch like Marquez and Linus do that, and. Yeah, because I, I'm much more of an actual fan of Marquez's videos. Like, I actually like to sit and watch them, but Linus's videos I'll, like, put on in the background and yeah, listen to somebody talk about NVMe SSDs or whatever, and I'm like, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> but it felt weird. I don't know if you watched their... Did you watch their response video? Oh, boy. It... It felt so. We're we're like weird. two for two on shitty apology videos this year. It just and like I understand why it was like this, but it felt so corporate and so scripted. I mean, because it was for sure scripted yeah. and like written out, but that automatically in my brain makes it feel disingenuine when it's like they're obviously reading from a teleprompter. Yeah, um, people like the CEO and his wife coming on, I can kind of tell because, mm -hmm. or I, I'm kind of okay with because they're not normally like media personalities. Yeah. So it's like you want to get prepped, you want to be prepared, you want to say your piece and like read it off a script because you don't want to fuck it up and have anything be misinterpreted. But it's like the other people who are media trained, it's like, 
ah, you should probably know a little better. Like Linus was saying, I got too far ahead of myself. Emotions got the better of me. And then he started going in on some dude from the company being like, I guess he gets to keep his job. And he's like, wait, I'm doing it again. I'm going to leave it here. And I'm like, how did you record and edit that? And people were like, you want to do another take? <laughs> you you want to go again on that one? Yeah. It, the... And people like... It is unfortunate that it was like it was after the the sexual misconduct allegations. So they they filmed that before those allegations came out. But then it's like uh, maybe hold off on the video and like now new stuff has come to light. So maybe take the video down, reassess, come back with a different one mm -hmm. that addresses all these other things that are happening. But whenever this shit happens, don't make a video like three days later. Because you don't have all the cards yet. You don't know what the hand being played is. You don't know all the information. And when stuff starts happening, then other people start coming out and then other people come out. So it's like, if there's stuff to be talked about, you need to like wait like at least two weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think that that is a completely fair thing to do. I've seen other people uh, in the past who have needed to make apologies and talk about stuff i've i've seen their audiences kind of be like oh why did you wait so long it's like mm -hmm. i think it's a good thing to wait a bit you shouldn't immediately the yeah. day of be like okay here's everything because i think that you should sit and, and not only think about it yourself but also talk to people who are in your space and like your friends and stuff and get different yeah. opinions about uh if you're making a video be send it to a friend and be like, hey, do you think that this is good? And have other yeah. eyes on it. And it's um, especially when sexual misconduct is related to it. I think you need to let them say their piece first and let them have the space to kind of like, okay, the floor is yours. You speak whatever you need to say. We'll address it afterwards. Speak privately first. Mm -hmm. But all of that stuff seemed to kind of like go out the window. It's like with so many people at this company with so much at stake so much going on and you have a human resources department you probably have a pr department mm -hmm. if not you should yeah it's like all these different things in place and it's like and that's the video that came out of it it's like it didn't it didn't like you said it didn't feel genuine it felt like we need to get the train back on the tracks we need to explain a couple of things and then get our company back to like grinding out videos mm -hmm. and it was only well i guess they said they were stopping production during that but it was like yeah, never mind. What I just said doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it also, it felt weird because I, I am subscribed to them, and they recently started doing like the twenty four seven stream thing. Oh. Um, and so it felt like kind of weird because every day I'll see that they're live, and mm. a part of my brain is like, why are they, why are they still streaming that? I feel like that should maybe take a slight hiatus i don't know if it's that simple yeah but i think um, i think companies like that are always the the sort of warning for youtubers because mm. there's a lot of i mean all of us in this position are like we want to grow our company we want to grow our business we want to take on more people more editors thumbnail makers title makers that kind of stuff or you want to go off and do like coffee or clothing or whatever and you want to keep expanding but it's like it's always like, man, am I am I expanding too fast? Am I going beyond my means? Is this too much? And then some companies like that probably do expand a little too quickly. And then you have way too many things that you need to keep on top of. And you have to do the videos constantly. You have to do the 24-hour streams. You have to do this, that, and the other and grind people into dust because we need an output at the end of it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not really about like, we love computers and we love having fun anymore. It's just a big corporate machine. Yeah, and that stuff is always really tricky to manage. Yeah, um, yeah, because at at that point, like you were just saying, like it's not really a YouTube channel anymore in the sense of like a homegrown YouTube channel. And I think that people do yeah. get kind of get ahead of themselves because once it gets to th that point, then it's like, okay, well, we have to maintain this pace now. Yeah, we can't really and I dial don't it back. I don't really like that response a lot of the times. So it's just like, I'm only human. I make mistakes. Mm. It's like, I get that, but you're not you in your bedroom anymore making videos for like a million people. You're a massive media corporation that's worth millions. They yeah. can't afford 
PR and you can take your time and you can pump the brakes on your content a little bit to be like, you take a whole month off and come back and still like be fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just sensitive to that kind of stuff because I feel like the way we do our YouTube is like, I'm always trying to be like honest and like be right by people and do things properly and be nice to everyone and like not try and like swindle anybody, not pull the wool over anyone's eyes, not try and take people for all they're worth or anything like that. It's like mm -hmm. trying to do stuff very genuinely. So when stuff like that happens, it like breaches my values and I'm like, ah, oh, man, you fucked it up. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. Uh, speaking of uh, breaks and stuff, you've recently come back to making videos. How How are you feeling? I'm feeling great because I think I did a lot of soul searching and was like, man, YouTube is just fun. I yeah. still like doing YouTube. I just want to do it for fun. Mm -hmm. And I think I got a little too wrapped up in, I went from doing two videos every day to one video every day and then one every second day. And then it was like, whenever I feel like it. And I, then it's like, when you do that, it's like, okay, every video needs to be bigger and better now because people are waiting for this thing. And if I don't, I can't just pump out like, a 20 minute indie horror game kind of thing without putting more effort into it. Yeah. Like either more energy or more production value or more edits or something added to it. So I think I got a little wrapped up in that instead of just doing it for fun like I always have. Yeah. And I think I put too much pressure on each video to be amazing and now I'm like, I should just upload more often again. Like I'm never gonna be one of those people that has like a huge production team that puts like, a month's worth of effort into one video yeah. which is a, it's totally fine to do that it's just a different type of youtube but for me it's like i'm just more about like carpet bombing my channel with content <laughs> where it's like i just want to have i just want to have fun and i just want to get content out i don't want to have to like overthink the quality of it all the time yeah and i think that that's what i'm best at and where i thrive the best mm -hmm. that's been something that i've been thinking about recently um because I like stopped doing gaming stuff on yeah. my channel and I I feel a little bit of that pressure recently of like okay mm. all the videos need to be really really good now because now I'm not doing gaming stuff um and there's definitely a part of me that misses and it it's not like I can't still make gaming videos but for some reason my brain is like no you can't anymore you're not <laughs> great gameplays anymore whereas like I I changed the name of my channel because I didn't want to have gameplays in the name because yeah. I was like, okay, like as far as like searching in the algorithm and stuff, like people are going to automatically assume that I only do gaming stuff. And so that was like the biggest reason. But now I definitely feel a little bit of that pressure where it's like, okay, every video needs to be yeah. bigger and better and like blah, 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 blah. And so I want to, I also kind of want to, pump the brakes a little bit on in that aspect and be like no i can i can play a game if i wanted yeah, to it's like it's the double-edged sword of when you because i don't really do it anymore where you announce a change that you're doing yeah for a rebrand that's a little different for like a change in your name but when it comes to like like those videos where it's like life update kind of stuff and it's like you can just do your thing you don't need to like run everything by your audience all the time like i used to always be like guys i need a break i'm leaving mm -hmm. for a month but yeah. then it's like then your audience gets an expectation you get an expectation you feel like you have to live up to some sort of standard mm -hmm. but now it's like if i'm not feeling it i'm just not going to upload and the audience are like well attuned to that now where it's like oh we get it yeah but if i announce that i'm going on break then that just puts a whole bunch of like things in people's heads mm-hmm Instead of just doing, if you're a YouTuber, just do the thing. It's your just channel, it's your life. Just do whatever the fuck you want. Just do the stuff, baby. Just yeah. do the stuff. Yeah, uh, uh, there's a there's definitely a part of me that misses um, the like daily grind in a sense mm. of like, okay, going and recording a couple of videos, blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and now that I'm not doing as much gaming stuff anymore, I feel like it's harder to do that sometimes. Yeah, and that's, I don't think that's a you thing. I think that genuinely is just harder to do with that type of content. I mean, mm -hmm. you did it with Una's Honest, and it's like, some of those videos are not a video. Yeah. It's like you sitting down and doing accents that are wrong from different countries. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what is and it's like, that? It's like, that's, that's, like we did a, when I was there, it's like we did a thing where we just put wax on each other and then took it off. And it's like, uh -huh. that's not really a video, but it works. Yeah. 
And I think that that's where the fun of that is. Mm -hmm. It's like, I just want to sit down and play a random thing and yeah. it works. Mm -hmm. I did recently, I because I had like a list of things that I was like, okay, I'm going to play these when I come back. These are like on my list. And then some of them were like, oh, Garden of Ban Ban came out. Okay, cool. And that's fine because it's like a two hour thing that's edited down. But I was like, Killer Frequency is one I want to do. And it's, I want to do it all in one video because a series of that is like, yeah, I don't really want to do that. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I did it and it's like, yeah, I uploaded a five hour video. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> and I get like, people love it and they always do really well. And I'm, I'm proud of it and it's cool. And I like the stuff that, like that is on the channel. But at the same time, I'm like, it took me three fucking days to record that one video. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know how people spend a month doing one video. I, and we've talked about this before too, where both you and I have that same kind of mindset where if it's like, okay, once the video is recorded and edited, it's like, okay, I just want it to go up now. I'm impatient. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine just like, like sitting on videos for that long. Yeah. Um, even like yesterday, me and Jocelyn were having a little meeting of just videos that we're going to make over the course of the next month or whatever. And so mm -hmm. we're, recording quite a few of them next week and i was yeah. thinking about that in my brain of like oh man i'm just gonna have to sit on these for a while because we were thinking of a bunch of stuff to do for halloween and i was like oh these are really fun video ideas and i'm excited to do these but we're recording them in september and i'm like oh man i then i have to wait a month <laughs> yeah that's why you just that's me with any ego content and then you just over tease it <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like no, because I wanted to show you that it's cool. I want to show you. God, but I'm, I run the risk of spoiling it all. And then when it comes out, it's not that special. <laughs> that's going to be me in a couple of days. It, it might be me today. By the time this episode comes out, it will have come out. But the trailer for my tour documentary is dropping mm. on the 29th because that's my 11 year anniversary. Yeah. Um, but I should be getting a rough of that today. And once I see the rough of it, because the guys that are editing it are like, yeah, we were really pumped to show you it. We just have to make some changes and then we'll send it to you for notes. Um, and we're having, we're sending it off to a sound house to get sound properly done for it. Um, but once I see that video, I'm going to be like, I want to put it up now. Yeah. So wait a week. Oh Fuck. man. Yeah. My team told me not to upload it, but they didn't say I couldn't. <laughs> Not upload it. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say I couldn't sing it. Yeah. They didn't say I couldn't sing my trailer. Um, it was cool, though. The other day, um, we went to... So me and Austin and Zach, who you've met them, but they're editing the tour documentary and helped film a ton of the tour doc. Um, we went to a picture shop the other day, which is formerly Technicolor. Um, mm. we went to their offices the other day and met with uh, a colorist and like a team of people to do the, the color for the, the movie. Nice. And I'm so excited. It's going to be so cool once it gets all colored and everything. But we went into their, into their offices to have a meeting and we went and met with the colorist and we went into like the coloring booth and it was so cool seeing like all the crazy like screens that they have, which are all like, like 10 or 12 bit color screens and they're all like super dialed in and then they have this big color console with all these dials and switches and wheels and stuff and then they were talking about their process and it was so cool. whatever i have a macbook at home like we all got <laughs> shit no one we cares got it. It was yeah cool i have i have a 4k monitor that's probably not even dialed in properly who cares i've never calibrated any of my monitors and i don't think it would no. make that much of a difference because and this, like, this is the first monitor I have that has HDR on it. And I'm like, I think it's making all of my Photoshop thumbnails look like shit. It looks great <laughs> here. Yeah. But then when I upload it, I'm like, oh, the colors are all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're the only one that can see it. Yeah, properly. it's like, oh, it's overexposed now. Mm -hmm. uh, they were telling me stuff with color that I didn't know you could do, though. You can convert. Uh, you can convert things from Rec 709, which is like the color space, into log, which I didn't know you could do that. I thought you went the other way around. You do, usually, 
but we were like, yeah, we filmed the dock on a bunch of different cameras, and some of the some of the footage is Rec Seven Hundred Nine, and it's not log. Um, so for those listening that don't know about that, it's like the color space that it's recorded in. So Rec Seven Hundred Nine is like what a normal picture looks like, but <clears throat> uh, log is everything is super flat. Uh, but there's a bunch it's like of looking data. at a black and white movie. Yeah, there's like no color, there's no contrast at all. Everything looks super, super flat and boring, but it has more data. And so then you can like boost the highlights and take down the shadows and add in the color. Yeah. And so you want to record stuff in log because you have more flexibility in post. But anyway, some of the stuff we recorded in Rec 709 when I was filming myself and he was like, oh, it's fine. I'll just convert it to log and then convert it back in once I change everything. And I was like, I didn't know you could do that. He's like, yeah. It feels like you would lose shit. How can you, I, I don't know. how can you add data to something that doesn't have it and then change it back? Oh, fuck that guy. I have no idea. He's taking you for a log <laughs> ride, bud. He's taking you down the long slippery slope of financial ruin. <laughs> I'm. I'll never recover from this. <laughs> but I'm That's excited. Cool, though. He was. He was like, yeah, because we're Technicolor, we have like all of these crazy like film stocks and stuff that we can add on to it, and like this huge yeah. color library of LUTs and stuff like that. So That's what cool. they did with Oppenheimer. It was actually just recorded on uh, A7S3. It was recorded on an iPhone 4S. <laughs> they just yeah. At the end of Oppenheimer, it said shot on iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> What's that music that always plays? It sounds like the fucking oh. Allie intro. It's like <laughs> Oppenheimer's just standing there and you just hear like wom, 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 wom. <laughs> It's like shot on iPhone. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That would be so good. <laughs> oh man. Nothing could capture that quality quite like the iPhone can. Yeah. It, oh, it always shocks me whenever people you see it on Reddit or on TikTok or something where people are like, I didn't know that's what they did in movies. I didn't know that's how you did any of that stuff, like with cameras and how like dialogue is all ADR'd and shit mm -hmm. like that. It's like, yeah, because the fucking IMAX camera just sounds like, it's like a in the background. helicopter. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Or like how you get like, like that kind of stuff, like turning, like if you saw the raw footage from like an IMAX camera or something or any movie really and it's shot in like vlog or mm -hmm. whatever fucking what, what do alexa cams use i think it's just called re log yeah like but that. imagine watching those and it's like before editing or grading or anything it's like man your movie looks like shit man record this in the fucking 20s <laughs> <laughs> yeah it all looks there's so much that goes into it so much movie making's fun though it's real fun it's real cool I'm so excited once it goes off to sound. Mm. Um, yeah. You're gonna add gonna like cool. some like uh, sub bass crunch. Yeah. It's like Every I went out into a. There's gonna be there's gonna be like a a forty hertz rumble throughout yeah, the, so entire the whole thing. thing. Gonna there's gonna be a a clock ticking. Yeah, but and it's it gets a metaphor, faster. You know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and there's actually going to be all of the drum beats are actually going to be made out of bullet casings, mm -hmm. and it's going to mm -hmm. be a play on society about how we're all just marching towards our own death. Yeah, and then at the end it says Unas. <laughs> Everything's a metaphor, baby. Everything yeah, it's a metaphor. Ooh, baby. You got to have some like pretentious bullshit in your doc. I don't have anything like that in my one. Mm, you got to have like something have? that is like. Did you know? In Ethan Nestor's documentary, there's a, a subhertz note that actually is the sound of his stomach rumbling because he was always hungry when he shot he was for the. Always a little hungry. He was a hungry little guy. Did you know that in the background of every shot, you can hear him snoring because he was always eepy? <laughs> he was eepy sleepy. There is. I can't remember. Zach and Austin were telling me something the other day where they were like, here's a little Easter egg that we added in. I can't remember what it was, but I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But I don't remember, so apparently it wasn't that cool. 
I want to do an Easter egg for its actual Easter eggs hidden in shots. <laughs> There's like little wrapped eggs in the background of some shots, and it's like, did you know there's 72 Easter eggs in this movie? But they're actually just Easter eggs. And it's they all are. in one shot way in the distance. <laughs> it's Every like we egg. actually had 72 eggs over there. You just can't right see there. them. You can't see them at all. God. I saw a, a, a great meme the other day. of It was a Lord of the Rings meme where it was like, what's wrong, babe? You didn't point out that... Uh, Aragorn um, broke his toe. <laughs> yeah, that he broke his toe. <laughs> I love those ones where it's like you're like watching over a friend. It's like don't say it, don't say it, don't say don't, it, don't say don't it. Do it. Oh, Did you know he, he actually broke his toe during the scene? Viggo Mortensen actually broke his fucking toe in real life during this. It's crazy. Did you know he actually wasn't supposed to play Aragorn at all? It was actually given to a different actor, but that other actor was so hard to work with that they went to Vigo and he said no, but his kids convinced him to do it. Really? Yeah. Who was? And he fucking nailed that shit. Who was the actor before? I can't remember, but he was some Will dude Smith. that he was some guy that I'm like, I don't know who you are. Aragorn actor before Vigo. Which Vigo, call him. Stuart Townsend. Stuart Little. <laughs> he was <laughs> impossible to work with on set. <laughs> no one could find him. Um Stuart Townsend, he's an Irish actor. I love Why? all those memes of like Stuart Little shot dead in Atlanta. <laughs> like <laughs> Elmo stabbed in Chicago. This picture of Stuart Townsend looks exactly, and I mean exactly, like Kira Knightley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm very excited to see this. <laughs> exactly like Kira. Wow, it really does. <laughs> That's just Kira Knightley. <laughs> that is Kira Knightley from the Pirates franchise. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you want with it? Where she just talks with her teeth all the time. Have you seen that lady on TikTok who does mouth acting? Uh huh. It's really good. I want some soup. <laughs> I feel rather pretty. <laughs> rather pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it's snowing. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I'm taking the dog, dumbass. I'm taking the dog, dumbass. Kira Knightley, if you're listening, come on the podcast. <laughs> Tell us about the so we can do it to and, your face and the prejudice and yeah. the other things. What pride and prejudice did you have? What was it? What were they prejudice against? I, I don't know. I've only seen the movie once. Well, I've never remember. seen it. So tell me. Uh, I don't know. Probably women, honestly, because it's a movie mm. about love in the fucking way back. That's the beauty of prejudice, isn't it? Could be anything. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Yeah. It could be sexism. Could be racism. Never really could be know. xenophobia. Could you be just never. You just never know. No. A mixed bag of awful. Oh man, a mixed bag of awful. We love it. <laughs> we don't love it. That's kind of life, isn't it? A mixed bag. A mixed of bag awful. of awful. <laughs> mm -hmm. What kinda what beautiful. awful thing has happened to you recently? Do you ever sit down? Do I sit down? <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever sit down and think about your life? And it's like I saw a tweet the other day. It was like anxiety is such bullshit. It's like ooh, what if something happened? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what? what? If what do I have to worry about and complain about? I know it's like, <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter who you are, you're allowed to complain, whatever. I get that. Fuck off. I don't care. There's sometimes that I'm here like, man, I'm so anxious today. It's like, why am I anxious? Because all I have to do is record video games <laughs> and play video games and I make my own schedule and do whatever the fuck I want. Off oh, my the, life. Off the anxiety meme, I saw one the other day <laughs> that was like... Uh, Your Honor, in my defense, like, who fucking cares? Like, really? <laughs> oh my god, who cares? <laughs> Your Honor, in fairness, like, who asked? <laughs> it's like, uh, the attorney did. It's like, all right, facts. <laughs> facts. I want to see a Gen Z court case. Oh, no. Oh. Your Honor, dude, my dog was mad tripping, though. <laughs> I don't even know if that's Gen Z talk. I don't know I how don't to talk like a Gen Zer. I don't, I don't. I don't know. Do you swear to tell either. facts and nothing but the facts? <laughs> <laughs> On God. <laughs> On God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just 
on God. And then the judge is like, all right, sick. Um, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> 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 I've never used those terms before. Like bet or on God or yeah. facts. I don't use facts mm. either. I do say lit sometimes though. Oh, I say lit. Lit is one of those things that I started saying as a joke, but now it's actually part of my vocabulary. A bit. Yeah, I do have a lot of those. I wonder what which ones are gonna uh, stand the test of time? Because there was a time when cool was one of those words. Like it's something was cool, daddy-o. And that's just an all-timer. That just transcended all of time. <laughs> cool, the goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the goat. I, it's shocking to me how many people don't know that that's an acronym. I was like, why are they calling each other goats? There's people that don't know that it's an acronym? Yeah, people are stupid. Oh. Oh. You know this. <laughs> I do. I'm one of them. I'm a stupid little guy. <laughs> Wait, but back to what we were talking about. What were we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. You're trying to fucking lasso me back to something you don't even know where you're going. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about anxiety. What's the worst thing that's ever happened or something? Recently. Something. Recently. Worst thing that's ever happened, it's, it's fine. You could fucking come up with someone. Hmm. Someone. Something. <laughs> you could come up with someone. Someone is the worst thing that's ever happened. Like recently, I think about that, I'm like, I get anxious about stuff and I'm like, what the fuck has happened to me recently that's making me anxious? Nothing. It's all made up in my head. All these conversations I'm having in my head that aren't going to happen, it's like, great. Now what did we learn? <laughs> you put yourself in the bad place. <sighs> what has happened recently that I've... Hmm. I don't know. See? I don't know. We have no reason to be anxious. No You're reason. cured. You're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're Thank so you. welcome. And hear that, everybody at home? There's nothing going on in your life. Huh? <laughs> You're not that cool. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Mixed messages. This is not what, I, not what I was trying to no, say. No, no, no. That's exactly what Sean was saying. What right. I'm trying to say is, you ain't shit. No one cares about you, so yeah. stop caring about you yourself. Yes, perfect. Perfect. All those perfect. things that you're like, oh, what if I go outside and someone makes fun of me? No one gives a shit about you. No one, no one turns their head to look at you. No one fucking cares. Just do your shit. Be a cog in the machine. Grow old and die and get it over with. I thought about that last night. I went to a little thing last night. And remember those pants that I bought for that 70s birthday party? Yeah. I was like, those are cool pants. I should wear those pants. And my mind was like, oh, but people are gonna judge you for wearing these pants. And I was like, no one cares, actually. <laughs> nope. And uh, the only time that somebody cared about the pants was multiple times in the party, people complimenting the pants. And I was like, oh, the only time that people care about the pants is when they're actually complimenting the pants. That's yeah. Sick. See, nobody cares. And not only that, but if you went outside and someone did care, why should you care that mm -hmm. they care? Exactly. What are they exactly. gonna do with their fucking mullet? I don't know. Looking like every know. other person fitting in. Yeah, Curtis Connor. I like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, why are you putting words in my mouth all the time? Huh. Sean she put something else in my mouth. <laughs> Sick. That's facts lit. I like I like being this pen guy that I am right now. I like having a pointer to kind of like de like de demand the scene. Yeah, you're kind of a conductor right now. For yeah, those listening and not of... watching, Sean's got a pen in his hand. Yeah, and I'm kind of just like conducting the conversation. What time signature is this uh, six, conversation in? Five. Five, that is a fucked time signature. <laughs> what would that be? I don't know. I don't know how to do time I'm signatures. I'm the drummer and I can't do it. <laughs> is that even a real thing? Six, five, any five, fucking six. time signature is a real thing. You can do anything with anything. Really? Yeah. What does the time signature stand for? What do you mean? Like, 
five six time. What does that mean? I think, and I'm not good at music theory. It's like five measures. So if you have if you have like four four time, it's four beats per a four beat measure. Uh -huh. So it's like an even time signature. So it's like everything's in four four time. That's like that you can like groove to like pop uh -huh. music, but crazy shit. If it's in like three four, it's a, I can't remember if it's like three four time. But it's like three beats per a four bar measure. Is three, four time, is that one, two, three, one, two, three? Or is that? I, for, I got woodwind brass mixed up, so I don't know. No, no idea. But I think that could be three, three time. But that could be wrong because you're doing one, two, three, and then starting again. Can somebody hop into <laughs> Ableton? And make a 69 420 time signature, please. Thank you. That probably just boils down how many times does 69 go into 420? I don't know. What's division? Four, I don't know. What's division with you? Six times. Six. So, so, yeah, so we, we all learn something. <laughs> I know. Wait, That's it goes into it six times? Evenly? 69 goes into 420 six times. Not evenly, no. It's like 6.08562. Oh. Then it's a weird time signature then. Yeah, but you know, that's what math rock was made for. Yeah, common denominators and all that. Yeah, I fuck with differential equations. Oh, man. Don't you love those? No. After you start asking me about time signatures, I think everything I said was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've said anything accurate. It might have been. Because I, I think I it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I know that in my head. And then you say it out loud and it's like, I don't know fucking anything. Do you think that in a day you could teach me a song on drums? But like a decent, not just like. Da, 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 da. That would be that beat would be much harder to teach you. That's like a jazz beat. You think so? Just going. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah, because you're not just you're going da 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 da. As your foot and hand have to do something else, you're not going to be able to do that. What's it called? It's called like a pim a pimlet, pipi. What's it called? It's a certain a paradiddle. A para pimlet. A patty pimlet. Yeah, patty pimlet, pure scouser. You can do a paradiddle. You go right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. That's a paradiddle. Why? Paradiddle, paradiddle. Why? For what? Because reason? it teaches independence in your hands. I don't want to be independent. And then if you put that, <laughs> I want to be codependent as a drummer. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that is so good. Where it's like you hire a drummer, but it's two people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're codependent drummers. <laughs> Yeah, he works the feet. I do the hands. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be cool. That'd be kind of cool. No, because then you can do a paradiddle around the kit. Oh. So you can do right, left, right, right on everything. And then it sounds really complex. Hmm. But it's actually a lot easier than it sounds. But to teach you a song on drums in a day? Yeah. I probably couldn't even teach you to wash yourself in a day. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you could teach me... A drum solo in a day. I don't know any drum solos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure you do. Sure you do. I, I could teach you Are We the Waiting by Green Day. Uh, is that that's the just easiest boom, one? Boom, boom. Yeah. yeah. It's easy. That's why I'm telling you. Is there I can't a drum solo do it. Is there? No. No. What about something else? <laughs> There's drums all on that for sure. Uh, do they have the double kick drum in the chop suey? In chop suey, no. Can you teach me a song with double kick drum? Oh yeah. Because that's sounds... I have a question. When you're drumming, and sorry to all the drummers out there, when you're drumming, are you? Is your heel oh, on the where ground? Where does your the whole balls time? go? <laughs> <laughs> when you're drumming, is your heel on the ground the whole time, or is are you tapping the other way? It depends on how you like, play. If this is your foot, this is your heel here. Are you going da da da? Are you going da da da? So it depends on the type of 
genre and the type of speed. Because if Perfect. I'm if I'm doing drums like normally, like most drummers are heel up, so you're just pushing the ball of your foot into the drum head. Uh -huh. But that allows you to do like a whipping motion to get like da -dun, da -dun. Huh. But if you're going really fast, you're basically doing like this with your feet. Your feet are like staying in place and your your legs are staying in place and your feet are just like wriggling like up and down. Huh, wriggling. I, I'll sh I'll sh I can't show you. Oh, he's whipping the grippers out. Ladies you go like this with your foot. <laughs> you know? You don't know how to drum? Yeah. Because I was, so at, I was at a certain point, my... you you go fast enough that you're if you're going like this, you can't get enough speed into it. So it's you're just like, like a wasting energy. Toddler running down a hallway. Like, ah! Yeah. And then you're just wasting energy, and it takes too much energy. So if you lift your legs up and let your feet float and just tap, then you can get crazy speeds. Because I was thinking about that the other day, because I was tapping my toes, and after a while, I was like, "Damn, this is really a workout for my calves. How do drummers do this?" Yep. They go so much. It hurts faster. like fuck after a while. <laughs> You ever cramp down there? You ever get a Charlie yeah. down there? I would I would play for like gigs with friends or like practice. And then we'd play all our songs that we were gonna do, and then we'd stop and then go out and like take a break for like an hour or something, then come back. It's like, okay, let's go again. And I'm like, my calves need to warm up. I can't do that that fast anymore. I went and saw um Post Malone the other night. Uh it was oh. a very good show. Uh it was very, very fun. He's super good live. Um mm. but he had a full band with him, which was fucking awesome because a lot of his songs he did, they almost sounded like metal covers sometimes. And it was fucking awesome. But before the show started, I could see side stage. I could see the drummer warming up. He just was doing this. He was just going, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, really, yeah. really fast. And I was yeah. watching him do all of his like drumming stretches and stuff. And I was like, whoa, mm. that's crazy. Or you know, they'll grab was... the sticks and then they'll like twist them a certain way to like twist their arms out and then they'll come mm -hmm. back and... But I've never seen somebody move their hand left and right so fast. It was crazy. Yeah. You got to get the radius and the ulna going. What? He's like, that's the two bones in your arm. The ulna? The radius and the ulna. They let you I've twist. Never heard that. Whoa. I never yeah. heard that before. Wait, speaking of your ulna, you just got a new tattoo by your ulna. Oh, I fucking did, baby. Let's go. Let's talk about that tattoo, huh? I think we, didn't I have it last episode? Did you? Yeah. Did we talk about it? I don't think we talked about it. Did we? Maybe we did. I can't remember. I can't remember either. Anyway, it's the Behalit from uh, Berserk. Uh, it's pretty epic. The Behalit. Uh, it means that if you get this and everything goes right, that you'll get to meet the God Hand and maybe become one. Damn, the God Hand gives And then you'll do some up. fucked up shit to one of the people who helped rescue you and it'll be awful. And you'll read the pages like, I don't want to look at this. <laughs> Damn. A lot a lot of <laughs> sexual assault in Berserk. Whoa, okay. A lot of a lot of insane gore, tons of nudity. Question. Yes. What's Berserk about? Yes, little, Ethan. Little, Ethan in the back. Yes. Yeah. Quick question. What's Berserk little, about? Little just boy, a little, just a little boy synopsis. with the blonde hair. Uh huh. Uh, Berserk is about the worst things that humanity can do. Oh. And the length you will go to to follow your goals versus follow or like help people. Will you help people or will you help yourself? Oh, damn. Uh, it's just, it's just a dichotomy between Guts and Griffith, you know, they're going at it and then Casca's in the middle of it and then he wants to protect her and then Griffith is like, I want to do fucking horrible shit to you. Whoa. Yeah. So the, the reason I like Berserk is not, there's a, there's some things like that where it's like, ah, this, the sexual, like the nudity and it gets a bit much and like, mm. It's like a female character shows up in the manga and you're like, well, it's going to be like two chapters and I'll see you naked at some point. Mm. Like, if everyone was getting naked all the time, sure. But it's like, eh, you can tell that he's a little horny sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes it's like people who are not of age because it's about like horrible demons wanting to do horrible shit to people. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, I don't really like that. There's like, sometimes there's like sexual assault just for the sake of it, for like shock factor. Mm-hmm. But I like it because it's like Guts, Griffith, and then it's just them versus each other for the whole thing. Is Berserk one of those 
anime that has like a billion chapters? Um, kind of, yeah. Is it still going or is it? No, he died. Oh, okay. Was it finished? Nope. <gasps> oh, that sucks. He, I think he took a 12 year break from it at one point and he came back and then he, he got addicted to like, like idle games with like cute little girls in them. And he would just play those all the time. And then his manga started being like, here's a cute little girl out of nowhere. And it's like, Ugh. Ugh. it's like, you're getting weird now. But he, um, the very last chapter that he himself penned was like, finally, we got a resolution to like a really big thing that's been going for like three quarters of the whole thing. So it was like for the last chapter that he ever did himself, it's like probably one of the better ones he could have ended on. Has it been continued since he died then? Yeah, some people that he knew kind of like took up the mantle and he hmm. apparently told them what the ending was going to be and kind of like left a few notes here and there about what the end is going to be. So now they're going to try and fill in the gaps and they themselves are also like, we're not going to do it the way he was going to do it and do it justice. That'll never happen because that's impossible. Hmm. But we at least know where he was taking it and we'll try and do it as much justice as we can. So it's like, we will probably get an ending to it. That was his intended ending. It's kind of like a Game of Thrones thing where it's like the stuff that happened in the TV show. It's like, that's probably where stuff is going to go in the books. Yeah. But you know that the creator himself would do it better. Mm -hmm. But the, the people who took over from have like a really good grasp on what he did, but you can tell it's not him anymore. Yeah, not to spoil it, but at the very end, the last page, he just goes, I'm about to go berserk. <laughs> I would ends. love that. That would <laughs> be so ends. sick. <laughs> It'd be so much fun if he said that. <laughs> what would your genuine reaction be if that was the last page and the main character just goes, All right, that's when I went berserk. <laughs> the end. It was like a story he's been telling the whole time. It's like, <laughs> You should have seen me go berserk. <laughs> I yep. would literally put the thing down and look at Evelyn and hear a womp womp in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Berserk boy. is awesome. I'm reading through it again since I got the tattoo. Damn. It's so fun. I started I've reading also... through Akira, and it's very Ooh, good. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Do you and? know what that's worth? Uh, it's fucking awesome. I'm almost done with the first volume. Uh, like the, It's like a chunky book, right? Yeah, it's pretty chunky. Because it has like six or seven. I have like, I have like a really nice collector's edition in my place, and I haven't read any of it, but... It's really good. Whenever, whenever it comes to uh, manga, I'm always like volume, chapter. It's like I always get confused on like how much is in what. Like a volume has like 10 chapters in it. Yeah, it it made me excited too because I was like, damn, this is really big. But I've never read a manga before. And so I didn't realize like how quickly you go through it. Oh, yeah. Um, Because I got through like almost probably more than half of it in like an hour and a half or two hours maybe yeah so i was like jesus I'm, i need to get the rest of this um, i think as people watch anime and anime is just notorious for padding things out mm -hmm. and like when people are saying the lines and you have to see the action it just takes longer yeah but when you read manga it's like holy shit a whole season i read a whole season of the anime in like a single day yeah. And I like, I didn't go fast, but it's like you're looking at the scenes and like stuff is happening. It's like, yeah, I get it. I know, I know what's going on. You don't have to like peruse the scene and like pick it apart or anything. I think um, I, I think I want to start reading manga though, because I, as you know, and like it's been a constant joke, like I have a really hard time reading. Mm -hmm. But when I've been reading Akira, it's been so much more digestible for my brain and I can actually yeah. focus. Um, and I think it's because I can kind of break stuff up by looking at what's happening, but also my brain kicks in and like almost like animates the stuff that I'm actually mm -hmm. looking at and I'm like filling in the gaps and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm actually like enjoying this. And this isn't super yeah. because I don't get I don't get lost like I do when I read, because if I read more, if I'm reading a page of just writing, then my brain starts to like get distracted and I'll do the thing where I read, but I'm not processing anything that yeah. I'm reading. 
But with manga, well, this, it's been different. It's been that's different. just a problem with, well, not really. It's like a problem with me as well with reading like novels because you're you're reading descriptions and like places and they're like describing everything that's happening in the scene because they can't show it to you. So manga's like, okay, we don't need to do all that. We're just hitting you with the action mm -hmm. and like the emotion and people are just talking to one another instead of talking about people talking about each other. Yeah. Um, no, manga's great. I love yeah. reading manga. I tried to get through One Piece, got to chapter 300. <sighs> no, 200. I have 300 more to go before the time skip where people say it gets good. Uh, even though most people would argue that it's good from the beginning. And it is fun, and I do enjoy it, but it's one of those things that you get to like a big moment, you get to a new island, they find a new bad guy, they fight this bad guy, it builds up over a whole like saga, and then like a whole arc ends, and then it's like, okay, let's move on to the next one. And I'm like, that's really fun if you're reading it like week by week, because it's like, mm -hmm. oh, what's the next adventure they go on? But trying to get through it all now, it's so hard for me to like sit there and read it. And then as they're going, it's like, okay, I just got through a big battle. That was epic. And then it's like, we're moving on to the next one immediately. And I'm like, oh, we don't take much from that one to go yeah. forward. And it just feels like rinse, repeat. I'm like, I get that that's why One Piece is fun, but I think that's why I like Berserk more because it's just like, here's the bad guy. We're setting it up from the beginning. And that's the whole story is like one thing. Yeah. It's not like a bunch of bad guys. That's why I stopped watching The Walking Dead show because it was yeah. the same thing every single season. It was yeah. like a new group of villains or whatever and then one of the main characters die and then they end up defeating that person and then the next season is the exact same thing with a yeah. new group of people. And I that that is the charm of One Piece because you're going on the journey with the characters and the character development and the world building is incredible. But it just started to happen so often that I was like, oh, I'm just like exhausted reading this over and over again. I can't really get invested. I can't like hype myself up to get invested in the next arc that you're going through. Because I'm like, I just left this one and I kind of wanted to like sit in that a little longer maybe or... I don't know. I'll, I'll finish it eventually, but I'm not trying to like rush through it. I feel like if I'm rushing through it, then I'm not enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Like I said that to Aaron. He was like, oh, you old curmudgeon. He was like, just enjoy <laughs> the journey. A part of me was like... Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't like take it that seriously. Yeah. And then I said, but I read all Jujutsu Kaisen recently, and he was like, God, it's so boring. <laughs> I was like, dude, come <laughs> what do you what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, it's just a journey, it's silly, it's goofy, you're just watching people fight, it's fine. Mm. Um but it was just a funny kind of like contrast immediately from it. <laughs> yeah. Well, if anybody but has any fun manga that they'd like to recommend, maybe I'll start becoming a manga boy. <laughs> I yeah, but recommend him, recommend him something digestible and not... Don't, don't recommend, like, Demon Slayer or something, because that's that's not... I don't like Demon Slayer. I, I don't want to read anything similar to the length of One Piece where it's, like, 300, like, yeah. volumes or whatever. It's like, I... No. I, because then I... It's too much... And it's just like, okay, well, I feel like I'm not going to be able to finish this. And that's yeah, why I started you, reading Akira, because I was like, okay, well, I've seen the movie, and I love the movie, and this is only yeah. six or seven volumes, so. I think you might like Berserk. It has, God, how many chapters does it have? It does have a lot of chapters, but I think because it's, it's easier to follow than some other ones, because they're not introducing a ton of shit all the time. It, like... It, really takes its time to get places. Is one chapter a book? Yeah, so like the little okay. thin mangas you would see okay. are one chapter. And then the Akira one you read is a volume which has multiple chapters in it. Okay. So that, that always gets confusing because the uh, Berserk ones I have are the Dark Horse ones that look like a Necronomicon, like the big black ones. Oh, yeah. And it's it's like a bunch of chapters in one, but I have like 13 volumes now. So it's it's pretty long, but I think I think it depends on what you're into. I don't know what genres you like in your media, whether you like like sci-fi stuff or you like horror stuff or like because Vagabond is also a good one, but it's like samurai stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I don't the, know if you like like ac like grounded historical samurai kind of shit. Those are probably my top two genres are sci-fi and horror 
Mm. I also got a Junji Ito book that I haven't started. Oh yeah, but... which one? Uh, I can't remember. Hold on. It's right here. Wait. Wait. Uzumaki, Shiver, Remina. I forget the other ones. Gyo. Oh yeah. Or G. Gyo was cool. I don't know how to pronounce yeah. it. But I'm excited about I like that. those I like those volumes because it's like, yeah, I just get my stories in it. Yeah. And that's kind of it. Get my little stories. Um, um, yeah, I was flipping through some of it uh, when I was buying it, and I was just like, damn, the illustrations in here are so fucking cool. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I'd recommend Uzumaki as well, only for, well, it's his most famous one. It's probably his best one. But also there's a Toonami, is it Toonami? Adult Swim? Uh anime of it coming out next year that looks really good um so i would recommend that i didn't know that toonami was still around it, it might not be toonami who am i thinking of Stuart townsend <laughs> Stuart little uzumaki anime i don't know i hate when it takes me a while to find stuff adult swim it is adult swim okay Toonami but it looks really good. Uh, Toonami does still exist. It's just a part of Adult Swim now. Oh, that's why I'm getting confused. Yeah. So I like Adult Swim. The A24 of animation. It kind of is, honestly. Feels really like is. it. It really is. Um, anyway. Any whoops. Should I we, think any whoops. Should we wrap her up here? We should, because I have Baldur's Gate that I got to play. The, oh. My paladin and Evelyn's fucking drow cleric. We gotta get places. I just started playing that. Was that last night? I can't remember. Maybe? Yeah, last you were streaming or... it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize how big of a game it is, and I started downloading it while I was streaming, and then I was like, Jesus Christ, it's 100 gigs? Not only Whoops. is it big to download, it's incredibly daunting to get into. I started, and I was like... I don't know if I can do this because I have 500 attacks right from the beginning and I don't know how to use any of them and yeah. I don't know how to play d and it's a, it's a lot and there's they don't tell you how to do anything. No, but it if you stick with it, it pays off because you can do whatever the fuck you want in that game and it all makes sense somehow. You can fight every single person in the game and the game will adapt to it. That's so cool. And every single person has dialogue that you can talk to. And every animal, if you get a spell, you can talk to animals. That's so cool. It's fucking wild. I don't know how that game exists. It's the game of the year for me. I don't care what else comes out. I'm excited I, for Spider-Man 2 and Tears of the Kingdom rules, but Baldur's Gate is fucking lit. I do really like the uh, cinematics in it, too. They're very yeah. pretty. They're very, very pretty. It's pretty cool. Uh, but the in the very beginning opening cutscene thing with the little worm that goes into the eye, I was like, oh, 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 oh. oh it's going to get worse, buddy. Wait till oh. you have sex with a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're not joking. No, bear sex is a meme for a long time. Oh, boy. It's like, this is why it's game of the year. Two words, bear, bear sex. Bear sex. Bear sex, baby. Anyway, thank you, leakers, for tuning in to another fantastic, fantabulous, wonderful, magnanimous episode. You say cool things now. I didn't hear anything you said because Discord lagged out, but I'm sure you said wonderful words. I said cool things. <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, wherever and leaking and leaking. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast on all platforms. Um, we uh, Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube. Uh, YouTube.com slash BrainLeakPod. We have two amazing videos up there right mm -hmm. now as of recording this episode, which is a serial tier list and getting each other toys and surprising each other. Very fun. Yes. And we have like two or three left to go that are being edited right now. Mm -hmm. And they're not, they're not podcast episode videos want to reiterate that these are standalone videos so if you're like i don't know if the podcast is for me you can just watch those and have a good time yeah watch two adhd fuck nuts <laughs> <laughs> go crazy and have no idea what they're doing more stuff to come on there it'll be very fun okay you. love you leak you leak you bye bye